today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two of those monster storms that are ongoing. Alongside that now moderate risk of severe weather that is going to include a major tornado outbreak likely for the Dixie Alley down in the Gulf State. So we're going to be looking at all of these things within this video. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we will go from a moderate risk to a high risk or do you think we will stay at a moderate risk for tomorrow? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now we do already have that live stream up. That's going to be in the pinned comment and the description description there you can go ahead and like that to help the algorithm out to suggest it to more people already and then set that reminder if you want to go there uh, there's going to be a button on the bottom left I think where you can hit that reminder and it will give you a notification when we start that stream that's probably going to be an all-day stream so I hope you can make it let's get straight into the video and we're taking a look at our GFS model this time around and that's our first storm up there for the upper midwest moving out uh, that one is bringing some snowfall there for Minnesota and surrounding regions, a 995 millibar low pressure center, pretty strong there. Uh, so by the time we're reaching about, I would say tomorrow morning, obviously, we're beginning to see that next storm develop. And it's a 1,002 millibar low pressure center by the time it's moving over Arkansas. And by this point, our severe weather is already going to be getting underway. I think around 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. tomorrow is when that's going to get uh, initialized there, those severe weather uh, storms down there. And really, that's very similar to our high risk we had a week ago. Uh, it started very early, 12, 1 p.m. This has so many similarities. And quite frankly, in my opinion, I think to I think tomorrow is going to be worse than the one we had a week ago. I think the setup is better, actually. So we might not get upgraded to a high risk, but in my opinion, I, I do see that there is um, some higher parameters there that look a little bit worse than last week, in my opinion. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to move towards the tail end of storm number two. And then we're just going to watch for a lot of that severe weather activity um, for the coming weeks. And then we're going to move on to day one. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a look at that severe weather event, but mostly day two, where we're going to talk all about that major tornado outbreak that's going to be going on tomorrow. So stay tuned for all of that coming up. Now, here we are taking a look at approximately... I would say this is about 6 a.m. on Friday, so we're moving past that severe weather event real quick to watch this second major storm moving out. That's going to be a 990 millibar low pressure center. Absolute monster of a storm here uh, moving out up into the Great Lakes regions and up into Canada. This will bring some storminess there for the East Coast where there will be a marginal risk there on Friday of some severe weather. Uh, generally going to be the first thunderstorms for some people, possibly there for a lot of the East Coast. But then by the time we're reaching, uh, this is probably around the nighttime hour of Friday, that storm does move out through New England, getting some snowfall potentially for the mountainous regions of New England. Absolutely nuts. Uh, but by the time we're reaching about 7 p.m. on Sunday, you can see there will be the potential for more severe weather down there in the Gulf states. And this brings me to my second note I want to remind you guys of. I just made a Patreon post, a massive one, talking about all of the dates that I've pinpointed within the next couple of weeks for potential severe weather events. Uh, and I made that Patreon post. So you can check that out in the description and in the pinned comments. Uh, it's very cheap, and you can get access to all of those exclusive posts that I make over there with some more long range. Uh, just some bonus content is available up there in general. Also, some snowiness up there for New England again, so that's very interesting as well. I've also pinpointed this date here on um, early, early on Thursday morning. So we're going to be taking a look at all of the parameters, like the cape and things like that, uh, on the Patreon post for these specific dates. But here's the day one categorical outlook, and we're about to dive into this in just a moment. But you can see there is a slight risk for Dallas-Fort Worth area up through a bit of southeastern Oklahoma, and that does extend eastward into Arkansas and Louisiana. We also have a huge marginal risk surrounding all of those regions. So what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to break down the individual risks, wind, hail, tornadoes for day one. Uh, and then we're going to quickly move through that model guidance for the simulated radar for day one. And then we're going to move on to that major tornado outbreak that's going to be going on tomorrow. All right, now here we are taking a look at that wind risk, and this seems to be actually one of the bigger risks here, wind and hail for day one. Uh, we have a 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there within the two green regions. And then the yellow, we have a 15% chance of, of wind within that region. Let's move right on to the hail here, and you can see it's basically the same exact thing, just a little bit larger. So I think the hail risk is the biggest one going on today. 
Then the tornado risk, and this is the interesting thing. We don't have a very large tornado risk at all today. Only a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location. Uh, but I do want to remind you to please be safe during this event because the last tornado outbreak we saw, we had a small chance of tornadoes the day before as well. Uh, and we did actually see some tornadoes, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. So uh, you do want to take these events that are kind of neighboring those major events uh, pretty seriously because those conditions are starting to get ripened for tornado activity. So I think there could be a little bit of a larger uh, chance of tornadoes than the Storm Prediction Center is putting on here uh, for today for these regions. So just be on the lookout for that for sure. Here's that model guidance real quick, and here's the simulated radar. By the time we're taking a look at it at 2 p.m., we don't see any severe thunderstorms yet, really. Uh, mostly that snowfall is the biggest thing going on for Texas, New Mexico, and Colorado there. Uh, but as we move on towards, I would say this is about 4 p.m., we do see those supercells beginning to develop there for Central Texas. And then as we move, I would say towards about maybe 9 or 10 p.m. here, those storms become a little bit more multicellular, and those are near near Dallas-Fort Worth area, I would say. Uh, and, and generally, um, this I, I think the earlier on in the evening we are, the more of that severe weather risk we have in the earlier in the afternoon. Uh, but by the time we're reaching about 2 a.m. here on Thursday, you can see it's a lot of the same, actually. We're still just taking a look at a lot of those storms around. And I think that's just going to generally extend straight into the next day, into Thursday. Uh, so speaking of Thursday, we're going to move on here. And we're going to take a look at that day two categorical outlook. And then we have a lot to talk about with that. So that's coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that day two categorical outlook here. Within the lighter green, we have a general thunderstorm risk. Within the darker green, a marginal risk. Within the yellow, we have a slight risk. Within the orange region, we have an enhanced risk. And then that new red region, of, of as of this morning, we have a moderate risk of severe weather there for Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. You're going to want to take this seriously everywhere within this severe weather risk area, even if you're in the greens, the yellow, the orange, or the red. Uh, but that red and orange especially is the area we're going to be watching tomorrow for the most of that activity. Let's move on through those actual uh, individual outlooks here. And here is that day two wind outlook. 5% chance within the green, 15% chance there within the yellow, and then a 30% chance there within the red with that hatched region. Do you see that hatched region? That means they expect the chance for even more significant damaging wind uh, than outside of that region. So they expect the chance for very damaging wind within there. Here's that day two hail outlook. And we are going to have supercells, discrete supercells, which is the worst kind. Uh, in this region is what the Storm Prediction Center is eyeballing, and that usually does include very large hail at times. So we're taking a look at a 5% chance within the green, a 15% chance there within the yellow, and then a 30% chance there within the red again with also that hatched region once again. All right, and then last but certainly not least, the tornado risk here where we have a 2% chance within the green, which you're going to want to still take seriously because a 2% chance is still a chance, and tornadoes are very bad, obviously. So you just want to you're going to want to be prepared, have a no radio available. Those are in my comments or sorry, my description down below. Uh, you can find all sorts of survival stuff, but including a NOAA radio there that is available to you guys. Uh, I think it also has like a flashlight and stuff. So it's kind of like a um, a, a multi a multi tool in a in a way. We have a five percent chance there within the brown, so it's starting to increase, and then the yellow ten percent chance, and then the red fifteen percent chance there within the red. Uh, so obviously this is not good at all. Uh, and once you get into that 10% to 15% range and above, that's where it's you know looking like a uh, very likely that it's going to be a tornado outbreak, especially the 15 and above. And, and obviously 30, 45, 60, uh, you're taking a look at an absolutely extreme tornado outbreak. Uh, I would not be surprised tomorrow, honestly, guys. Like I said, I think this is a better risk than we saw last week. I, I think the parameters do look better. We're going to take a look at those parameters in a moment, but I would not be surprised if we wake up tomorrow and unfortunately have a high risk again, back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, I think the conditions look better, so obviously I'm thinking it's likely that if those showers clear out earlier, that we will see that high-risk upgrade, probably 30% chance tornado upgrade there. Now, I'm hoping that does not occur, but I am thinking that is a good possibility, probably 50% chance in my mind of a high-risk upgrade there. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and then we're going to get into the model guidance for tomorrow. We're going to really break that down for you guys. So here we are taking a look at that radar. And remember, I said those showers clearing out is kind of what's going to dictate whether we get a high risk or not, in my opinion. Here's at about 5 a.m. And you can see all these showers and thunderstorms already in the area, especially from Mississippi and Alabama, the area we're eyeballing uh, for the most of that tornado activity there. 
Uh, so those showers, if they stick around, that is going to hinder the chance of severe weather in a way. Uh, it's not going to entirely lower that chance to where there's none, but it, it really will um, lower the chance of that high risk uh, and just kind of marginalize everything a little bit. But if those showers clear out and, and they really move north out of there by time we're taking a look at the early morning hours, like 9, 10 a.m., and we get hours of clear uh, and possibly sh sunshine, I'm expecting a high risk in that event. And that is what happened last week. We saw those showers clear a little bit earlier than expected. And the Storm Prediction Center went ahead and upgraded that to a high risk. So I think they're going to have the same mentality today. Let's take a look at that cape. And this is very similar to last week. Again, 2000s widespread within the yellows and reds there. Uh, and this one is picking up a maximum of 3,300. And that is very similar again to last week. We had 2000s widespread with 3000 scattered in there. It's the same exact thing tomorrow expected. 70s tomorrow, same thing as last week. Uh, dew points in the 70s, same thing as last week. So... There's so many similarities. Maxed out shear here, as you can see. Uh, when we see those browns and those pinks, that is about as high as it can get here. So uh, it, it really is just through the roof with all of these parameters. Uh, so again, just I would not be surprised if we see another high risk. Let's move a little further with the simulated radar. So this is by approximately, I would say this is approximately 1 p.m. here on Thursday. So tomorrow, obviously, is what we're talking about here. Um so again, look at this. It's already underway. So me and Brendan are likely going to need to be live already probably by 1 or 12 p.m. tomorrow, if not earlier. So we're going to be prepared to go all day. This one does appear like it will come to an end a little bit earlier than last week. That is kind of what I'm eyeballing. I'll show you guys that in just a moment. But here's that simulated radar. It looks like already some supercells developing there, especially in Mississippi. This is the, the tornado... Uh, the significant tornado parameter and I want to check myself I have not checked while I'm making this video but I want to see I want to compare this to the tornado parameter last week but I'm pretty sure that on a couple of these frames we do get a higher value here than we did at any point last week right here already this is 1 p.m. we have a maximum of 13.35 you can see that on the bottom right hand corner there that is the maximum anywhere on this map that we're seeing uh, which the maximum on the bar, as you can see, is 10. So this is absolutely breaking the scale, basically, at this point already. And we're at 1 p.m. All of those pinks, especially the brighter pinks. But, I mean, even reds is is typically what you would see in a tornado outbreak. So to see the bright pinks widespread and to see it through the roof is absolutely out of control. And this is one of the lower frames. Let me keep reminding you guys that. So let's just move towards about 2 p.m. tomorrow, one hour later, and you can see these move a little bit close, closer, mostly here to uh, the Alabama-Mississippi border, so they're moving eastward here. Um, it's going to be interesting to see which state out of Mississippi or Alabama sees the worst of the impacts, because last week it was Alabama, and Mississippi didn't see quite as much of that activity. Uh, maybe this week it'll be Mississippi and not as much of Alabama, because right now it looks like Mississippi is getting the worst here on this frame, but it could really be anywhere within those risk regions. Obviously, we're going to be live throughout all of this, so again, I'm just reminding you guys of that. We're going to be watching it with you guys the whole time. But it does look like some significant supercell activity obviously going on. And then the significant tornado parameter. Look at that. Now the maximum is 16.68. So we're, I mean, we're 6.68 above the maximum on the scale. So we're absolutely destroying the scale right now. Speaking of destroying, you guys should destroy the like button, by the way. Uh, so be sure to do that down below to help get this information out. Uh, I don't really care how many likes I get personally. Like, I don't look at the likes and be like, oh, yeah, I got a thousand likes. Like, obviously, it's nice, but I'm not like seeking attention here. I really just do want this to reach more people, and that's the reason why I'm doing that. So be sure to destroy that like button. Obviously, this is a life threatening event, and I want as many people to know about this as possible. Uh, so, those brighter pinks you can just tell are becoming a little bit more widespread as well by that frame. Let's take a look at 3 p.m., and as you can see, here, it's just getting a little bit worse. We see those supercells now crossing into Alabama from Mississippi, but they're still in Mississippi too. Also, southern Tennessee is in that moderate risk, so we're going to be watching southern Tennessee as well. But all of these regions are just included in this moderate risk. And then look at the significant tornado parameter here, guys. This is when it starts to get really crazy. This is the same frame, by the way. It's pink everywhere. The bright paints you can just tell are maxed out, but we have a maximum there on the bottom right of 23.57, which is... Obviously, 13.57 above the maximum. This is more than double what the scale goes to there on the bottom. So this is just, I, I'm at a loss of words. Let's just move on to the next frame. This is going to be by approximately 4 p.m. here. And as you can see, uh, we're taking a look at those supercells still just widespread. Let's take a look at that significant tornado parameter. Still increasing 24.26 on the maximum here. 14.26 above the maximum on the scale down there. This is now extending well into Tennessee. Also Kentucky. 
uh, Missouri, Arkansas. Me and Brennan are going to be watching all these states tomorrow, obviously. Uh, and then by the time we're taking a look at, this is probably about 5 or 6 p.m. I'm actually mostly worried about around now because look at that. On the simulated radar, this actually looks worse by this point than it did earlier in the evening. Uh, and that significant tornado parameter, guys, I just, I can't with this. Uh, this is almost uh, gut-wrenching here, but this is tw this is 28.39 on the maximum, almost 30 on the significant tornado parameter somewhere on this map. Uh, and, and that is 18.39 above the maximum. So this is almost uh, triple what the maximum on the scale down there goes to. So this is, I think right here is the most I've ever seen on the significant tornado parameter. This is the HRRR model. There might be models that disagree. But to see any model calling for anything like this is obviously um, just out of control. So I'm extremely concerned for tomorrow. Uh, and, and if you live in this region or have any loved ones down there, you should be as well. And they should all be prepared uh, to, to get to the nearest room of their house, uh, be prepared to have a NOAA radio, uh, and, and just be prepared to take action in, in the event of a tornado hitting their home. For my confidence tab, unfortunately, I am out of five out of six. I'm pretty high on the confidence. This is happening tomorrow. The parameters all look good, and, I, and I'm confident we're going to have a tornado outbreak of some degree tomorrow, uh, unfortunately. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think we will get a moderate or high risk because we only had an enhanced risk when I asked this? And Joseph Luttrell sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, said a moderate risk is very likely, which it did occur, so it was very likely, and a high risk is definitely possible, and that's certainly how I feel right now. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Garys, and John Quilisi. Anyway, if you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, you can probably tell that I am just not, I'm in, I'm not in a good mood right now. Um, I, I'm concerned. That's how I feel right now. So I, I'm very concerned. I'm sad about what's possible tomorrow. Um, so we're going to be breaking that down with you guys tomorrow. I'm, I wish I could be just light and cheery right now and very excited, but I'm not, I'm not at all. So, uh, everybody should be prepared. I, I, I hope everybody has a plan in place. Uh, and, and I just can't stress that enough. Pay attention to the storm prediction center, pay attention to the national weather service, uh, and, and just heed those warnings, please heed those warnings. I think tomorrow is going to be bad. And my gut is telling me it could be the worst of the year. So I, I don't want to downplay this at all. Uh, this could be the worst of the year, and I, and I certainly think, uh, hopefully it, it is, because if it's not, that would mean that something's going to top tomorrow, so uh, I, I'm just hoping this severe weather activity just really dies down, and we don't see a bad April or May at this point, because March has certainly been very bad. Anyway, thank you for, thank you for watching this video. I, absolutely share this information, share this video with your friends and family and Facebook and everything, because I want everybody to know about what's going on. Uh, also, the live stream, guys, you can send that to them. We're going to be trying to cover that all day for as many people as possible. So I hope you can make it. Thanks for watching the video. Please stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next one.